welcome fans, families and friends. Pastor Talia Poetui, Servant of God, Doctrine of Salvation, Church Ministry. Hey, I'm ready to focus on something. The, today we're going to talk about something very important about Bible chronology history. Okay. You know, so today we're going to talk about the accuracy of the King James Version Bible. As you see nowadays, we have a lot of modern translation, though. So people believe that all Bible are the same. It doesn't matter. You know, they all interpret the same. But you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't believe in such thing like that. And I don't buy that. So uh, down there, people, folks, and you're having a Bible, then go look inside your house and tell me how many translations, Bible translation in there. Especially the modern translations. There's a lot of modern translations. And uh, I'm a little curious. And uh, so that's why I took an, uh, a serious studies for the Bible from more than uh, almost 10 years from now. You know, 11 years from now. So if you do your homework, you you would understand the entire history of the Bible. Yeah? But if you don't, it's not a good thing to practice online, but you don't study. Okay. So today... I'm going to talk about some of the things that mentioned in the Bible, okay? The accuracy of the uh, King James Bible version. King James Bible, okay? Have you heard about the King James Bible? That's 1911, nine, I mean 1611, you know, 1611, uh, the first written Bible. So we're going to talk to that Bible today. And it will include a lot about the modern translation. The historical, the origins of the King James Bible, and the origins of the modern translation. Who wrote the modern translation? Of what? What? What in manuscripts it wrote? How did it came up to be? You know. So, and we're going to talk more about it. And so, I know some Bible critics. They want to reverse everything to make sure they condemn the King James Bible. But today, before I'm telling you, I want you to listen very carefully. Maybe you can learn a little, little, little things from here, and then you start from there. So, remember Jesus quotes from the Old Testament, context that many times once preached that God's word of His, of His word shall preserve and last forever. It mentioned in Isaiah chapter forty, uh, verse eight. It says that the grass wilted, the flower faded. But the word of God shall stand forever. So that's the King James Version. And behold, Christian people, every scripture that I'm going to read you is from the King James Version. We'll have to look at it and investigate whether these words and verses and chapters are the same. But it, 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 will it make sense to you? Okay, let's look steadily in the book of Psalm, King James Version. In the book of Psalm, it says that Psalm 12, verse 6, 7, it says here, Verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, and silver tried in a furnace on earth, and purified seven times. You see, church, it says here in the book of Psalm that the words of the Lord are pure. These are pure words, you know. Uh, there's no darkening in this word. This is the word of the lights. This is the pure, the clean words. You know, it comes from the clean heart. It comes from the clean heart God. It comes from the compassion God, okay? And as silver tried in a furnace on earth, you know, and purified seven times, even though a silver is purified and uh, tried in seven times in the furnace, it can't match the pure of the word of God, right? So when you look at verse 7, it says, Thou shall keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from these generations forever. You know, so it says, those shall keep them, O Lord, those shall preserve them from of, from these generations forever. You know, when you articulate the verse, then contextually speaking or contextually investigating the, the text, then you look at how the book of Psalms said, God shall keep them, O Lord, you know. Those shall preserve, I mean, God preserve, keep and preserve His Word from this generation to generation to generation. All right? So, so who preserves the Word of God? That God preserves His Word. That means not me. That means if, if, if somebody says, well, I can preserve my Word. Well, that, that's your Word. You can do preserve, but you can't even preserve those words. Why? It's going to vanish away. But God is God. And this is his word, 
and his word is eternal. His word is the truth, unchangeable, and he can preserve his words forever. From this generation to this generation, the first century generation to now the 21st century generation. Go soon. So, so which word of the Bible, which is the perfect word of God, and shall not pass away? So which word of the Bible? Which word? Let me say this. So which word or which Bible is the perfect word of God and shall not pass away? Okay, church, people, now listen very carefully. I'm, uh, I'm unpacking something good for you, okay? And I want you to focus on one view so that you would understand that this same view was passed from the first century to Jesus Christ to the apostles, apostles, to the deacons and uh, the missionaries, and then to the Christians. They received the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem and then spread out as diaspora and preached out the gospel to all nations. And then in the 7th century, 6, 7, and 8, and 9, the Christian all over the world, other than the Bishop Bob Church, man. So I want you, uh, I'm, I'm unpacking something here so that you can uh, articulate what I'm trying to tell you today. Okay, see? So let me, let me, let me, let me take. So which word, okay? Which Bible? It's the perfect word of God and shall not pass away. Is it the Bible that man preserved? Or is it the Bible that man talk about? Is it the Bible that God preserved? Amen. Or is it the word of God, the word of truth, which is the Bible? So which Bible? Now, it talks about which Bible. So let's take a look at this Bible. This is my Samoan Bible version. It was interpreted by our ancestor Samoan in Avao. Uh, 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 many centuries ago, okay, and this Samoan Bible was, was interpreted from the English, the English language, from English to Samoan, direct from the King James Version 1611, the Samoan, so probably this is the King James Version, okay, Bible, why, because it was directly translated from the King James Bible to our Samoan Bible, so Samoan's first Bible is the King James Samoan Bible, okay, and so many Bibles, and so many Bibles, and especially English Bible. There's only one Samoan Bible, but there are so many English Samoan Bible. Well, that is the NIV, New International Version, and the Revised Versions. Man, I will let you know all about those, but that's a lot of Bible. You can understand. Well, there might be some problem with this Molin translation. Okay, let's let's go look at the Second Peter. Second Peter was chapter one, verse twenty to twenty-one. Okay. So uh, we, we have to look at some scriptures and find out what's going on with the scriptures. Now let's go to Second Peter, and then we're going to look at um, verse 20. It says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Okay? You got that? The Bible says that we need to know this is the truth. We need to find out and whatever we find and we need to understand that God says and God's word says and knowing this first thing, first thing first, that no prophecies of the scripture is of any private interpretation. That means when the Bible speaks to us, we need to silence ourselves. When the Bible says that no, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, while the Catholic Church and the Pope, man, they declare themselves that they are the only church. And the Pope, I'm telling you, and the Pope is the only person, man, can interpret the Bible right. Now, absolutely false view. This is a violation of the scripture interpretations. Amen. It hit the scriptures in the verse of King James Version, which is the book. Of the Lord. Amen. That's what Peter said. So when I say that Peter said, Peter, you know, first Peter 20 say that this Peter, the Pope turned it into a saint pope, but turned upside down. Amen. As he was crucified with his legs above and the head down ground, the same way that the Pope say that the scripture is false. The scripture said this to the Pope, knowing to the Pope, knowing this first, that Pope. No prophecy of the scripture is a private interpretation of you or your Catholic Church. They ignore it. All right? They ignore it. 
And they both said, I'm the only one that can interpret the Bible correctly. It's a violation of the scripture, verse 20 of Peter. Now, this is not the Peter and the Pope. <laughs> uh, Pope says that Peter is the rock where the Pope found his church. Now, verse 21, it says that, For the prophecy came not in old times, but the will of man. Now, hear this. For the, proper, for the prophecy did not, did not, came not came not in the old times by the will of a pope or by the will of a man or by the will of anybody else for that prophecy from god okay came not in old time or in the time of the prophets but the will of man or the will of a pope or the will of anybody else amen no but holy men of god spake as they were moved by the holy spirit I got it, but holy men of God, you know, the holy elected men of God, amen, the holy disciples of God, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you know, as they spake, they were moved by the Holy Spirit, now they were moved by the Holy Spirit, this is something that many other people, they rejected the Holy Spirit, that the children of God or the servants of God are moving or are moved by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah, brother and Lord. So this is why this is why Christians are different from other religious beliefs and other religious view and other religious and all gods and cults church ministry. Okay. So the Old Testament was possessed by a single. Let me let, let me let me let me tell you all this again. So according to the context, the prophets were writing down the same word that God told them to write down, beginning to write the Bible. According to this concept of Peter say that, you know, the Bible. Uh, the prophets were writing down the same word that God told them to write. When God tells you something, do you do it? God says, write this word down, you write it down. <coughs> now, the prophets did the same. Okay? <coughs> the book that these prophets wrote, now, collectively, the Old Testament. So, so these prophets, the book that they did wrote, <coughs> are known as collectively the Old Testament. Amen. So those prophets wrote this book, the Old Testament. God told them what to write, they write it down. They were moved by the presence of the Holy Spirit. They were led by the Holy Spirit. When God speaks, they write it down, pan it down. They write it down. The book that these prophets wrote are known as collectively the Old Testament. Amen. So the Old Testament was possessed by a single nation originally known as Israel. Okay, let me tell you something like this, okay? Have you heard about the Old Testament? The first people that speak this language, Hebrew, singly refer to Israel. They are the only people that spoke this Hebrew language, okay? So the Old Testament was possessed as by a single nation. I'm talking about the Old Testament, the Torah, and the Old Testament, the whole part of the Old Testament. Okay, it was possessed by a single nation. Not too many nations possessed this. This is Israelites, okay, Israel. The single nation that possessed the Torah, the Hebrew text, okay? So the Hebrew language of the Old Testament, okay? So there was a language, there was an Old Testament which, that we have right nowadays. There was an Old Testament book of the Torah that the single nation of Israel that they speak Hebrew, they they possessed the, the Old Covenant, the Old the Old Testament. So no other people from any other nation. Okay. Uh, you, you getting that point? All the other countries worship their own gods and their own religion. The other countries, they worship their gods in their own religion. The nations of Israel speaks Hebrews. So the prophets wrote the Old Testament books in Hebrew. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you there? They wrote the, the books in Hebrew language. Old Testament books in Hebrew language. The New Testament was written about 400 years after the completion of the Old Testament. 400 years after the completion of the Old Testament beginning to write, began to write the New Testament. Okay. The New Testament was also written by prophets. Okay. But now 
their writing were no longer intended to a single nation of Israel. Amen. They were intended for the Christians throughout the entire world. Okay. For this phrase, for this phrase to make sense. Okay. The New Testament was written common Greek language, which was few people spoke of it to English language, which was the people common language to all nations. That means the New Testament was written in a Greek language. Okay, not in the Hebrew language. Okay. Uh, okay, and Greek language, few people speak in Greek language to English language. In the same language nations. When the New Testament was written, the Roman Empire was ruling the majority of the world. The language of the Roman Empire was Greek. That's the language that the Roman Empire speaking spoke in those terms. Uh, it's Greek language. So Hence, the New Testament was originally written in Greek language. Okay, let's do this example, all right? For example, a very good book, the books of 1 Corinthians, a letter written to the church in Corinth, a city in the region of Achaia. These letters were then copied by hands by Christians and dispersed, okay? and disperse it to many other Christians throughout the entire world in those days. Okay. These written copies are now known as manuscripts. You got that? Praise the Lord. You may wonder how are these manuscripts remain unaltered over the course of centuries? Why? Because Christians write it into many, many copies and this process Disperse it throughout the entire world. Too many Christians say they, they read it. You may wonder why it's an altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what we got here, the answer here, this is accurate. Accurate. It is because there were so many copies made numberings of thousands in the manuscript at such a huge degree of consistency, over 99 95%, and it was easy for it ready to spawn areas. You can tell the mistakes. If you have many, many copies, you know, you can see the mistakes from another copy to another copy. You can do the investigation. You can clearly see what is fault and what is wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. In a certain manuscript, if a word in a certain manuscript did not agree with the majority, the outline was simply rejected and in the majority was accepted. That's how they brewed the text in the King James Version. Now, actually, I'm talking about how the King James Version, version was written, okay? Do you understand that uh, the, the methods of operandi? If a word in a certain manuscript, okay, did not agree with the majority, the outline would be simple rejected, and in the majority was accepted. Okay, do you understand what that is? Huh? That's how they test the scriptures and make sure that we're going, the word of God is preserved. By writing down many, many copies, more than that. 5,000 copies and very spread of people. So when you collect those copies and you look at it and you can easily spawn the errors. Okay. Now watch, for example, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that, uh, let's say that 500,000 manuscripts that Jonah was swallowed by the whale. Okay. And then the Christian themselves, they write down only four or someone himself write down three manuscripts says that Jonah was swallowed by, swallowed by the shark. What do you think? What's the answer? What scripture or manuscript they would have brought to write down in canonical in the Bible? So it was easy for them to tell that 500 manuscripts were correct, then three manuscripts were corrupt. All right. You know why? 5,000 manuscripts says that Jonah was swallowed by the way. And three manuscripts, or three, or somebody, or corrupted person, or a corrupted theologian, or a corrupted book, bishop, write down that Jonah was swallowed by the shark. 
man. So the majority is tied down to this manuscript that people use, man. And they rejected the three manuscripts, all right? But now let's get to the real questions, okay? Huh. How is it the Old Testament was written in Hebrew? And the New Testament written in Greek became the Bible that written in English right now. Wow, that's a huge question. Nowadays, people too are looking at the Bible, you don't know exactly what where the Bible came from, you know. Hey, what's the Bible came from? How did you end up with this book? Nowadays, the Quran uh, selling a lot of bad examples and try to accuse and trust the Bible in many, many other ways. The Islam scholars that try to change views and blame the Bible that God is not God and Jesus is just a man and all those and such and such to make sure to trust the Bible. And so many Bible critics are there to destroy the Bible, destroy the Christian and destroy the, the deity of God and Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, let's bring example here again. This example, we are bringing out the truth, okay. Hebrew language plus Greek plus Greek language and English. That means the Bible came in three English. The Old Testament that was written from the Old Testament Hebrew manuscripts. No Greek manuscript, okay? The Old Testament. Only the Hebrew manuscript. A single nation talked to this language. And any other language and any other religions that worship their own God other than Israel, okay? Now, the Old Testament was written in, in the Hebrew. So clear cut that the Old Testament that the Christian has is the word of God that was preserved by God in the Hebrew language, okay? And then to the Greek language, and then to the English language, okay? So let me tell you something, people. The, in those days, there were various forms of English, such as Old English, Middle English, were spoken as earlier as the fifth century. Hallelujah. The formations of the modern English was in the English that we speak today began in the late 14th century and was completed in 1550. <sighs> we have a little bit of history right now. This is a little bit weird, but the fact and the Holy Spirit will step onto your foot. So don't get mad. I want you to listen very carefully. During the century when English language was developing in area of dark ages, the Catholics hold a lot of amounts of power, powers in Europe, people, even over kings and queens of entire countries. The Catholic Church was so powerful that whenever a king or a queen was crowned, it was the Pope who blazed the ground on his head or her head, symbolizing the Pope's approval of this appointment of power. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Kings and queens, man, crowned by this pope, symbolize his powers of appointing, appointees, okay? So during the Dark Ages, few people knew how to read in Greek. Not too many people knows how to speak in Greek. And they can read in Greek and understand in Greek and read in Greek, okay? So, and even few people knew how to read Hebrew. Not too many people know how to read in Hebrew. This ability was generally, okay? It is nice. This is the fact, amazing fact, ever. This ability was generally confirmed. The wealthy and the well-educated people, so well-educated people, confirmed by this ability in those years. Few people speak Greek, few people speak English. So the Catholic create their own Bible. Now, if you're sitting over there and you're looking at me and you you say to yourself, "Wow, is the Catholic Bible the same as the Christian Bible?" Well, there is no such thing like that, Catholic Bible and the Christian Bible. There is only one Bible. But the problem is that the Catholic himself believed that uh, whatever he, the Catholic do, you know, they, they hold this Mass, you know, they hold this Mass communion to confirm whatever they do. One of these days, people, the Catholic will, will do a Mass communion, a communion to confirm you guys... You know, everything you do, everything you do, the, the Catholic will, come, will do a communion so to confirm what some more people will do, man, or every other people will do. But this thing, this whole thing, man, is weird. Amen. Why? Because since the Catholic and the Pope rejected 
the, the second Peter, the first Peter, chapter 20, uh, verse 20 and 21. Man, that's that's a whole problem. It's a violation of the scriptures, of the, the word of God. So the Catholic create their own Bible. Now, we're going to talk about the Catholic creating their own Bible. The common people, third and most spoke Latin language. This language, common people, they spoke in Latin language. Consequently, the Catholic Church created their own Latin Bible version known as the Latin Vulgate. Okay. Piplia Sacra Vulgate Gate. Trip us to Mr. Distincta. Or for Spanish puppy, okay? Then the Catholic Church then used the Latin market to convince people they need to pay money in order to be forgiven their sins. That's the issue. Okay? That's the intention of the Pope in those days. Amen. Why he wrote his own Bible in the Latin language. Amen. And create this error to see people to pay money to forgive their sins. Amen. That was the practice known as selling indulgence. You got that? Meaning indulgence means money paid introducing to allow for the remission of the severe penance of the earthly Catholic Church and great and the intercession of the Catholic Christian awaiting martyrdom or at least in prison for the truth, for the faith. You see this kind of view? This is not Christian view. Absolutely not Christian view. So, would you tell me what do you think about Christian now? Are Roman Catholic church members Christian? So, God forbid, <laughs> because I would not judge those people, but those people, they never study. You know, they entertain themselves by following the ball, but they don't study. They, they forgot about the importance of their soul. They just follow, they just follow. They just follow something that entertains them. They choose the subjects that make them very interesting and they can feel it, feel it. Mr. Feel Good, Dr. Feel Good. That's how the people, so God forbid, but let God do his judgment. <laughs> All right, will not say that. So the first Greek scholar to publish the New Testament in English language, Erasmus Rotterdam. Now we're going to talk about this guy, okay? Erasmus and the Texas Receptors, okay? Texas Receptors, you will, will keep listening to me. Thus, it was form of the Byzantine text that appeared in the first printed edition of the New Testament in Greek, published by the great scholar Erasmus Rotterdam in March 1516. All right? <laughs> A man named Erasmus who was able to read the original Greek manuscripts, so the Catholic was doing. This guy, he saw what the Catholic was doing. He's not a Christian. Amen. <laughs> My God. Erasmus, Rotterdam, was not a Christian. Uh, this man saw what the Catholic was doing, and in 1516, he can pass several of the original Greek manuscripts and publish in accurate New Testament known as Texas Receptors. Now this guy saw what the Catholic did and then he started, you know, make copies of the New Testament. Okay. Many, many copies. He, he, he made many copies of the New Testament. Okay. Are you good people listening to me? Amen. Erasmus Russell, okay? Accurate New Testament known as Texas Receptors, okay? Erasmus then took the Greek and placed it side by side with the Catholic Church Latin Bible manuscript. And then Erasmus took the Greek, amen, and placed it side by side with the Catholic Church Latin manuscripts. Okay, this allowed the common people to see by reading it and knew how they have been deceived by the Catholic Church, Latin Vulcan version. Are you listening to me? The idea that these guys revealed the public people, the common people, how deceitful what the Pope was doing? <laughs> Are you listening? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
Anyone graduated from high school understand what I'm talking about. Then Erasmus then took the Greek and placed it side by side with the Catholic Church Latin Bible manuscript. This allowed the common people to see by reading it and knew it how they have been deceived by the Catholic Church Latin Vulgate Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? The idea and why the people find out that the Pope Bible is trash. Okay, amen. Latin Vulgate Version. As a result, money stopped falling around. Money stopped coming in. And, and there's a guy called uh, Michelangelo who was eventually stopped painting the 16th chapel of the Catholic Church due to lack of funding. This guy, he was painting a lot of uh, paintings inside the chapel or the, or the church building. Uh, and he, he, he eventually stopped painting. Why? Because the money stopped coming in. Why? The people found out about what the Bob is sitting them because of this Bible. You know, those days you have to pay some money so that you receive, you, you, you have to uh, forgive your sins. You know, so now you see how the people understand. It's not that the the, the, the people received this Bible, Christian corrupt Bible. No, this guy had made a good idea so that the Christian would discover and prove the scriptures that the Bob <laughs> did something wrong in the Bible and he understands what he's doing. Oh my God, hallelujah. And then the money stopped coming in and then the project of the paintings of the chapel ceased. Amen, hallelujah. The original English New Testament Bible version. Now we're going to talk about this, okay? You know, you know the the uh, English original English. Uh huh. Okay. It says, since English was becoming most common language in England, in England in those days, man, English is the most common language. The people of England desire the Bible to be written in English. The Catholic Church in those days, however, had placed the death penalty on anyone trying to translate the scripture in English in spite of the Catholic Bolivision. You know what a Bolivision is? We're almost done with this video. This is our tape one of the accuracy English of the King James Version. Okay. Huh. Christian scholars William Tyndale attempted to write English Bible. Now let's go talk about this. We have heard about the story about Christian uh, scholar Tyndale. He's a Christian. William Tyndale. Peace be with this. Peace, peace be with him. Okay. In 1522, Christian scholar man, which is a Christian, please be with him, named William Tyndale, attempted to translate the Greek New Testament manuscript in modern English version. Okay. Soon after that, he was arrested for his efforts of and burnt him on stake. We heard about the stories. Okay. I'm just trying to give you some outlines because I don't feel much better if I try to explain how it happened and what they do to the man. I was just mentioning His last words before he died. Now, William Tyndale or Christian Tyndale, this, these are his last words before he died. Okay. God opened the King of England's eyes. Listen to me. The words that came out of William Tyndale before he died. He said, God opens the King of England's eyes. Amen. Three years later, in 1539, the King of England, named King Henry VIII, legalized the translation of the scripture in English. Amen. English language. From 1537 to 1533, after King Henry VIII's death, several kings and queens came to power in England some help for the translations of the English Bible, and some for the against it. Amen. You may have heard about Queen Mary, the first in 1516 to 1558. She was known as the Bloody Mary. 
Yeah, Mary, Saint Mary, Queen Mary, the bloody, he was not, it's a, it's a clear history. Everybody knows it, what Queen Mary did. And Christian called this Queen Mary, the bloody Queen Mary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You may have heard about her, that Queen Mary. She was also known as the Bloody Mary, reenacted the law against translating the scriptures to English. She's the one that reenacted the law about translating the scripture to English, the New Testament to English, and he enforced the killing of people that tried to do the same thing that is already confirmed and approved by King Henry. You know, she was the one who purged more than 3,000 Christians on stake. Amen. During her time, various attempts of translating a Hebrew in Greek and to English were made. There's so many, many attempts made by the Christians to do that. These attempts has included the first, the Great Bible, that attempt, they came up with the Great Bible, the Bishop Bible, the Geneva Bible, and Matthew's Bible, 1537 edition. Man. These translations were warned of many errors and consistency and left the people of England desires the translations they can fully trust it. You see that all these translations, the Great Bible, the Bishop Bible, the Geneva Bible, and the Matthew's Bible, 1537, all these editions and this translation were warned of a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors, inconsistencies, and left the people of England. The people of England need the word of truth, and they want to read the right, the, the good Bible, okay, and the good translations into English. In 1604, King James I was moved by the popular opinion and authorized any translations on the way. This translation was intended to be the final Final four, 54 of the greatest scholars at the time were carried together to the work of the project. Hey, each of these scholars were very fluent in many different languages, including Hebrews and Greek. These scholars were that broken up into six groups and assigned a certain portion of the scripture to translate. They would begin the roles. The Old Testament had to translate it. You see that? It's nice and beautiful, huh? The Old Testament had to translate it directly from the original Hebrew Old Testament manuscript. This is the beginning of the King James Bible. And the New Testament had to be translated directly from the original Greek manuscript. The leaders of each group agreed together in one accord and arrived at the final conclusion for each word to be written in the King James Bible version, or the King James Bible. Tune me in the next time. This is our first first episode of the accuracy of the Bible in English, and then we'll continue on the second the second uh, second episodes. God bless you when you're listening to the Word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all.